Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Creative Careers, where we are interviewing people working in the arts, alongside the arts, near the arts, from all over the place. And this month, especially, we are celebrating uh, Latino and Hispanic Heritage Month by interviewing uh, folks from the Latino community who are working in the arts all over the place. So I'd like to go ahead and welcome our guest for this week. Uh, this is Jesus Reyes. Thank you for joining us, Jesus. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what, what do you do? What is, what is your, your job or your career here? So uh, my title is a technical director and I work at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center. So that encompasses um, performance, live music, uh, and some gallery installation for audiovisual uh, systems. Okay. Uh, and I also do a bit of media production along with them. Okay, so for these, for these events, for these things that are happening, what is your, what are you doing most of the time to make this happen? Uh, I mean, generally it's like sound and lights, right? Uh, and really most of the things that I'm working with in the arts is like uh, programmable sound and lights. So digital audio boards, digital lighting councils, um, programming lighting cues, uh, working with artistic directors to develop a show or to achieve whatever their show is hoping for. Um, if a band is coming in, then it's just kind of like, you know, running off the, uh, the cuff to see what we can do to make their performance a little more dynamic. And then uh, when we do installations, it's like working closely with an artist to sort of achieve the experience in the physical space itself. So designing the system, that's kind of on the more technical end of the work that I do where I'm choosing equipment and creating an end user friendly system that can be uh, turned on every day and operate the same way and uh, friendly to people walking in and sort of take sensory sensitivity into account as well. So, um, I think it's probably my favorite part of the job, I'm being honest off the bat, uh, uh, just because I get to work closely with artists. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about how you got here. Did you do sound and lights in, 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 in high school, in college? Was this, where did you end up? How did you end up in this path? Yeah, it's a, it's a fun story to, for me to tell over and over again, to be honest, because I, I found my way. I don't know why exactly, um, but I found my way in, into the theater at some point, like my freshman year of high school. And uh, once I found my way there, it was like the people there were just something that I could ate up, right? Those experiences and those exchanges. Because there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, it's hard to put your finger on it, but it's definitely people who are not sort of in, in the traditional realm of interest, right? So really, really interesting sort of eccentric people. And uh, I found that I fell, fell somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. So falling on the technical side of that was like perfect for me, right? I got to be around all this energy and I got to sort of be creative, but also, uh, you know, build technical skills, which, you know, as a first generation, um, like Latino, that's something that, you know, your parents love to hear, you know, like I, I am learning math through sound, you know, like, so they're like, great, keep, keep it going. You're staying busy, you know? Um, and really quickly after high school, I actually got picked up by um, a visiting contractor to kind of come along and work with him. So for 10 years, it was just on and on, uh, freelance work in Chicago. And that kind of was an interesting experience on its own because you're constantly networking, constantly engaging with different people, different formats of performance. Um, and then also trying to leverage those skills into other industries, right? Because uh, as wonderful as it is to be a part of performances, it's not always something that is consistent. And especially during like COVID, I mean, an awful lot of people just had to stop working all together and find, you know, very, very talented people had to find um, jobs in completely different industries. Yeah, absolutely. So, so from there, um, I went to the military for a chunk of time, went to school to Columbia College in Chicago and studied audio design and production, right? And um, in terms of like a financial decision or a path, it was definitely only possible because I went to the military and went on the GI Bill. So it's very difficult, I think, for, for most people to pursue a uh, degree in the arts um, unless they have some significant support, financial support. So I think I just wanted to make a point of that. I wouldn't be where I am if I hadn't kind of taken those steps. Um, and then uh, I joined John McCool Arts Center right about um, my last year and made my way over to Wisconsin, which is a very different experience now. That's awesome. Um, so you talked about some of the things that you love about this work. You talked about loving the energy and getting to work with artists. So yeah, let, talk a little bit more about what makes what you do um, something that that uh, that works for you on, art, on an artistic level. What do you love about it? I, I 
first thing that jumps to mind is like the intensity, right? Like there is nothing like having a room full of people and like all staring in one direction and you are in control of what is happening uh, to some extent on that stage, right? Obviously you're working with a group of people, um, but I would say like operating the board, you know, expecting a cue to come in, anticipating like what's gonna come next, reading along with the script and knowing that there's an awful lot of people who are depending on you to kind of move the thing along. Cause you know, it's, it's like a common sort of phrase that like, uh, you know, th there's no lights, there's no, there's no show, but if there's no actors, there's also no show, right? So there's nothing to shine a light on kind of thing. Um, and that's, that's a great exchange, but there are people who depend on you to achieve an artistic goal. And I think that the, um, in terms of like my culture and my heritage, the thing that connects me to this very much is the idea of a craftsman. Right? So um, I am not necessarily the artistic director, right? And it's not just for me to kind of think of the idea. It is for me to take that idea and then really apply my skills to making it possible. And so that makes me feel very um, like utilized, right? Very, so it gives me some sense of purpose, uh, makes me feel important. And I talk to my mom about this often because She'll joke with me that like nobody else will fix her Bluetooth in her car. <laughs> and, and then I'll be like, mom, is that all I'm good for? And she's like, no, you should feel like, you know, very, very important that like you are the person who I depend on for these things, you know? And in that's in a much smaller sort of personal way, but to the same extent, when you're working with artists, they're passionate about their work. You know, they've put years into that script. They put years into that lighting design. They put years into becoming the actor they are, you know? So it's, yeah, it's, it's the intensity is, is kind of what drew me to it and what keeps me in it. That's awesome. I'd love to hear you talk about what were some of the skills that you had to work on most to get to the level where you're at. I, I love the, how you started off kind of doing these freelance jobs just all over the place before getting, getting a, a formal education in it. So what were some of the things that you, that you learned that you really had to, had to buckle down and figure out how to do well to be able to be good at this? It's the soft skills. I'll jump on that really quickly because all of us love what we do, you know, like whatever it is that you're good at, it's so easy to spend hours and hours doing the thing that you love to do, you know? And that's lovely. There are definitely people who um, can just, you know, lock themselves in a room and everything that comes out of it is gonna find a great response, but that's incredibly rare, right? I think everything really, um, an awful lot of things in our, are done in groups, right? Uh, to take a lot of people to achieve. So I am a very brash, very headstrong individual. I'm very direct and I needed to learn over time, you know, how to interact with people so that they feel safe, uh, safe enough to share, safe enough to bring um, constructive criticism to me and safe enough to uh, sort of make changes, you know, when they felt, some, they felt strongly about something. And I think that's what keep, what keep getting me higher, right? Um, certainly a portfolio is great, uh, but, you know, when you're in the, you know, are you easy to work with? I think it's really like, it's a phrase that though early on, it kind of like, you know, bothered me because I would have loved to believe that I was just so good that, that everyone should hire me. Um, yeah, it's in the end, at the end of the day, did the day interacting with me make you go home and feel stressed or did, did you feel safe? Like you're, you're now one step closer to having the performance or the installation or, or the, the event that you're looking for, right? Um, so I would say the soft skills were definitely something that I had to pick up and what I picked up by having to network with, you know, dance companies, theatrical companies, bands, you know, all of them have their own dynamic and all of them sort of, there's a different way to be tactful amongst all of those groups, right? So read the room, you know, make sure that, that your, your IPs and Qs and manners go a long way. I think that's an awesome point. I think that sometimes that gets overlooked and I think you're right. You need, you need that to be able to be successful. Um, yeah. Okay. So kind of, as we close things out, um, if there's a, if there's a student who's watching this now and thinks this sounds really cool, this sounds something that I think I might be interested in doing someday. What's something that uh, if they don't have a theater program that they can go and help out with, what's something that they can do from home today to work on some of these skills? Uh, it's a, I don't know, this might be out of the woods here. Like, Whittle, like, I mean, I mean that literally and figuratively, right? Like, um, start making, molding the world around you, right? In whatever way you can. Uh, some people code, right? And they can sort of work the CSS HTML thing really, really well. Um, some people are actually physically sculptors. Uh, 
basically try as many mediums as you feel comfortable with and do it consistently. Leave your mark on things so that you know yourself. You have things around you that are a reflection of, you know, your your attitude and your approach and your passion, you know, uh, and they're reminders, you know, like that that's what they are. So um, create now and that, uh, I know it sounds big and sort of vague, but it's uh, the difference between, oh, I don't have this resource, so now I can't do anything to, um, you know, I'm gonna make something happen no matter what resources are available. And that kind of resourcefulness and resiliency will, will take, you know, any artist a long way. I love that. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing some of your experience with us, Jesus. It was wonderful. Yeah, I appreciated the opportunity to share. Yeah, absolutely. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to come back next th- next Tuesday at 2, 3.30 for uh, another episode of Let's Be Creative. And don't forget to look at all the amazing stuff we've been doing all month uh, in, uh, in celebrating Latino Heritage Month. So we will see you next week. <laughs>